Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I'm finally sharing with you guys another behind the scenes video. It's been a while since I've made one, and in today's video, I'm not just gonna be showing you one photo shoot, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different photo shoots. I haven't made a video like this in a while because of a couple of different reasons, but the two main reasons why I haven't is because I've been mainly assisting other photographers I know in my area, like my friends Eli Infante, Roland Sanchez, or Marco Gilpas, all photographers you should definitely check out and follow. I've been assisting them, and whenever I assist them, I don't wanna take all the time of their photo shoots, so I just take a couple of shots, and sometimes it's just either just one, two, maybe three shots, so it's, it's not enough for its own video. And there's times where I either forget to record behind the scenes footage, maybe grabbing enough footage for maybe two to three shots and not the entire shoot, which is not gonna be enough for its own video. Or there's times where the weather gets unpredictable or some other stuff comes into play and I can't worry about that camera being recorded or recording while also focusing on the shoot and giving my attention to the subject. So in other words, I held on to this footage and only maybe shared them on my Instagram or on Facebook you know, just quick little clips showing that shot being taken. But I want to share with you guys as well. I don't want to just keep it to, you know, Facebook or Instagram. I want to share with you guys here on YouTube as well for anybody out there who's addicted to YouTube like myself. So I wanted to make this compilation and I asked you guys on Instagram if you would be interested in seeing something like that, and you were. I'm also going to be adding commentary to the behind the scenes footage so you guys can learn a little bit about, you know, why I chose that certain exposure, why I chose that gear, or maybe the model's position or the lighting position, I want you guys to learn and that's gonna be the best way to do so by explaining you know, why I made those decisions. So hopefully you guys learn from that commentary because that's something that I want you guys to do always when you, whenever you watch my videos, which is to learn. And speaking of learning, this video is actually sponsored by Skillshare, which if you didn't know, is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes in categories such as business, design, and a lot of other categories, including photography and even off-camera flash. With a premium membership, you get unlimited access to all of the classes and communities on Skillshare, so you can create a curriculum that's gonna work best for you, since you know how your mind works the best. And with Skillshare, it's perfect to keep that creative feel burning, as well as that knowledge of photography and anything else that you want to learn, ever expanding so that you can become a better person overall in 2019. One thing that not a lot of people realize about me is I tend to refer to the basics in regards to off-camera flash and photography in general. So lately I've been watching classes on photography, you know, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, all that, and also off-camera flash. Over the years, I found that by referring to the basics every now and then, you really ingrain that knowledge inside of you. And since I'm a very forgetful person, I tend to do so every now and then. If you wanna join more than 7 million people learning online with Skillshare, you can definitely do so because it's not that expensive at less than $10 a month and the first 500 people to sign up using my link in the description area below will get a free two month trial. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to give it a like and comment with your thoughts on how I can improve videos like these in the future. And if you guys wanna see more compilation videos, also let me know because that'll let me know to make more, <laughs> more of these videos. All right, take care guys and I'll see you in the next video. So what I went ahead and did is add the lighting setup for every single shot on the bottom of the screen. So in case you guys are curious about that, it's gonna be there. This was a interesting shoot for me because it was my first time using a three light setup in a long time. And also my first time using the MagMod MagBox system. I wanted to use both of the ones that I had with 8200s and really control my environment. I exposed this scene kind of dark. So I needed those lights to add dimension to the shot and basically create the lighting I wanted. So I have one lighting her dramatic in front. I have another lighting the boxing bag that's behind her in, that comes out in the final shot another for rim light. So this was my first time using the Sigma Art 105. This was back in November, I believe. And I was using the Five Fuck Glow Octobox because I just gotten it and I wanted to test it out. But it was a windy day. So one thing I wanted to let you guys know is that if you're using a big modifier on a windy day, that's going to be something to struggle with. I have an assistant, so it's not that hard for me, but if I was shooting alone, then I would use something smaller. I also wanted to point out that in this shot, uh, it's really good to have a model that knows what they're doing because you can see Clarissa laughing and then she gets very serious. Here's another shot of Clarissa at the exact same photo shoot with the exact same equipment, the 8400 Pro with the 5 foot Octobox. But one thing I wanted to point out here was 
that light position change that's going on right now. So when I had the light higher, it was nice and soft and there wasn't too much shadows going on at all really, but there was a little bit lack of light on the, was it underneath the eye. So when I lowered the light, it really filled it in and also specifically in the catch lights, the catch lights really showed up after that light change. This setup right here was actually from Photo Plus last year in front of the Javits. I'm taking pictures of my friend and model Jasmine. I'm at a lower angle because I wanted to highlight not just that grass thing, was it weeds behind her, but also that blue building that was coming out in the background at that low angle. In the final shot, you will see a little bit of it. I did take some closer shots, but this shot was the one I really liked. You can also see that the light's pretty up and aiming down. That's for that drama again, which I always love. And you can see that it was pretty hectic there, so I was trying to time my shots. Sometimes people would actually walk into my shots, but I got lucky with this one. So these next clips are gonna be a little bit weird because Ashley was just filming a little weird, but you can see that Jasmine is in that position next to the Javits. And I'm gonna let myself explain what I was doing right now. I'm gonna take a couple shots, but like I was shooting at that angle and I'm gonna shoot at this angle. The light is. So I'll just take like a couple more. Yeah. Or you can go stay right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna go over there. You can stay in the sun. Alright, perfect. Actually, you know what? That's a great pose. Kind of like just a little bit like you're looking down. Just a little. Yeah, like that. Alright. You go through. Right, let's get one where. Oh, that's perfect. Man. So sometimes the models come up with great poses and I just modify them a little bit. The final result that's in the end result here, the only thing I did was just raise her arm. Special thanks to Don for attending. She's on the left there and also Kerwin. He actually has a channel and he's an amazing photographer you need to check out. This photo shoot right here was actually set up by my friend Eli Infante, so big thanks to him for letting me take a couple of photos at his photo shoot. And also check him out on YouTube because he has a YouTube channel. I was using the Sony a6000 with the Sigma 56 1.4, both crop sensor lenses and camera. And I was using the 36 inch Glow Easy Lock Octobox double diffuse just because it was a new modifier that I got so I wanted to test that out. And I also wanted to show you guys that crop sensor can take great photos as long as you have great lighting. And of course the great model helps as well. I had the light closed for that softness and at an angle for that drama. And I was very fortunate I was working with Betsy because she's an awesome model. She was giving me a lot of great poses to work with so I just shot along. One thing that is very crucial to a lot of photo shoots is a good assistant. And you can see Ashley here being the best ever. She's struggling, I tell her to put it down. I was shooting with the Sony a6000 with the 56 1.4, but I'm a little spoiled by my gear, so I busted out my a7R3 with the Sigma Art 105 1.4 to just eliminate that background and get it nice and blurry. So I think I start out a little bit further away and with the light to the left, but I realized that with the light to the right, I get a little bit more pop since that sunlight's coming from the left. So I kind of just sandwich her between the light and then I get a little bit closer for a nice headshot, which is what you're about to see right now. At the end of the shoot, I did want to go ahead and switch back to the crop sensor combo because I wanted to show you guys that, you know, again, it is possible to take great photos with it. So I put away my a7R3 and the 105 1.4 and asked Betsy, to kind of pose in a position where you would get a nice sky behind her because although it's exposed a little bright in the video, it was really nice and dramatic and I wanted to capture that drama. So again, I always have the light a little bit up and angled down for dramatic shadows, but I was at a lower angle to get that sky in the background. So Betsy was giving me some nice poses again because she's a great model and I was just shooting away and this is the shot that I came up with. The one thing that I love about photography is you can make any location beautiful. 
So although there are dumpsters right there in the shot, I didn't pay attention to them. I paid attention to the way that the light was falling on those leaves. And since I was going to have her next to them and using the 105 1.4, I knew that the dumpster wasn't going to show up. You can see that I'm actually asking Julie to do a couple different things. I tell her to kind of pop her shoulder a little bit back and also pop her leg a bit up so that you can see a little bit more of the angles. And one thing I learned from Sue Bryce is that if there is something that can bend, you want to bend it. So you can see Julie here paying attention to what I'm saying. She pops the leg up, puts the shoulder back, and then I take the shot. For this specific shot, I initially thought I wanted a kicker light, which is why you can see my nephew in the back there holding a Godox 8200 Bear. He got a little bit tired though and sat down, but I was thankful he did that because I ended up taking a shot without that kicker light and it ended up being a lot better to me. You can also see that Ashley's a little bit tired there wanting to put the light down. One thing that's very, very appreciated and one thing that you guys need to take advantage of is if you have an assistant that knows what they're doing, that's seriously worth its weight in gold. She's amazing and I wanna give her one more shout out because right when I'm about to take a shot, she puts it exactly where I need it to be and I just love that she did that. I use the Godox 8400 Pro always with the 34 inch Glow Beauty Dish. It's my mobile setup because it's light and it has a lot of power.